The Lord used a video to inspire this movie alongside with a dream he gave me. The dream was about a blind person who had been done a, a very cruel act had happened to this person. In the video I watched on YouTube, this was a very cruel act done to this man. He's a fireman, and all the first responders were not only mandated to get the you-know-what, but also if they just wanted to be tested to be cleared to come to work, they had to pay $150 for every test they got and they had to get at least two a week. I'm going to share a dream the Lord gave me this morning and it is a very sad dream. This is Milton's white cane that he used to get around and this is the way it works. When, you, when a, a blind person gets ready to, to get up and go somewhere, they take the wrap around the top, they take it off, hold the handle, let it go, and it opens up. And they use the cane like this. All right. Now, what I want to show you is what I saw in the dream. It's an example of how cruel leadership in this world has become. Somebody in a dream, I was with a blind woman, completely blind, not partial sight, 100% blind. A blind person depends on their cane for leverage. They depend on their cane to navigate with. When they go up the stairs, they tap it a certain way. I mean, I went with Milton through all the training. They learn to navigate how to cross the street. They have to get around the stores. They have to use it to catch holes, potholes, curbs, changes in their environment so they don't trip and fall or bump in. Now, what these people did in this dream, it was extremely cruel. I've never seen anything like this before. Never heard of it happening before. But God showed me this in a dream. In this dream, somebody took her cane while she was relaxing. And I'm not going to do it with this. But they literally broke it, broke it, broke it. So it was totally unusable. It was no longer functionable. She couldn't do anything with it. It was a piece of junk. And they tore the elastic pieces in between right in here so that these pieces just fell apart. Just like four little pieces that just, it was no good anymore. Now, what I want to say to you is that is just as cruel as kicking crutches out from under uh, a girl's or, or a boy's feet. Kicking the crutches and, and knocking them on the ground telling them to get up. And they can't even get to the crutch. People don't realize how cruelty how cruelty is recorded in God's heart. He sees the abominations of the cruelty of people. He sees how mean, how treacherous people are in this day and age. And in the dream, when I saw what they did to her cane, I stopped and I told the whole group that had smirks on their faces and they were giggling and laughing. They thought it was funny. And I told them, God is going to judge you. God is going to punish you for doing this cruel act to this woman. Some of you are going to die horrible deaths. I was so upset, so angry. But when I woke up, I understood what was happening. God is putting out a decree. Starting with the house of God. People who are living a hypocritical life. People who are backslidden with an attitude on top of it. The rebellious. The greedy.
greedy, the powers that be that run these countries and oppress people. The governments, the heads of states that are causing people to lose their homes, lose their jobs, lose their lives, lose their health, lose their loved ones' health. The people that are oppressing financially, holding back the help. See, God judges that. He says, if you have it within your means to help somebody, and you clench your fist, I'm putting it in my words, you clench your fist, and you hide yourself from the needs of those you see are in dire condition. I will judge you harshly for that. And you guys who are running these countries, these nations, you kings, you presidents, you, you senators, you governors, Congress, whoever you are, parliament, God is going to bring his heavy hand down on this planet. And you think you've seen some brush fires. God says, I will burn your bones. And you will not be able to run. You will not be able to hide. And the people you have held down for so long, when God raises them up, you're going to be gnashing with your teeth while you look on as they get blessed, as they get helped, as they get delivered from your grip by the hand of God. Now we're going to go to scripture on that note. And the first thing I believe God wants to do is address his remnant. We're going to Psalms 32. Verse 1 and 2. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Going on down, he confesses his sin. Fast forward. Verse 7. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. And then God says, Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. But he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy, shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Now, that's your word to let you know if you are truly living for God, if you're truly seeking Him, not playing both sides, not, not being a double agent, not being rebellious with your hidden secret sins, but are truly, truly crying out to God, even if you haven't truly been freed yet, you're fighting it and you're doing everything you can to get your freedom, your deliverance, and live a holy life to please God with. Now, you are in a good place. I want to share with you Ezekiel chapter 9. This right here. Ezekiel chapter 9. Wow, this is, this is heavy. God wants all people to know. Saved or unsaved, he hears your cry. But those of you who are saved with a pure heart, he'll hear you. Those, I mean, yeah, those of you who are unsaved with a pure heart, his mercy will open up to your cries sometimes. It does. Like he did with Israel when they were in the thick of their sins. 
But his spirit will not always strive with you. This is what he says happens in Ezekiel chapter 9, starting at verse 1. Let me make sure I got that in the right place. Let me see. Okay. He also, he cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near. Now we're dealing with the heads of state. Even every man in his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate. I'm sorry, these are God's servants here. Came from the higher gate which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a rider's ink horn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house, and he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man with whom, upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. Look where he started. At the house of God. And begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men. Which were before the house. And he said unto them. Defile not the house. And fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. Hmm. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them and I was left that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Oh Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great and the land is full of blood. And the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. And as for me also, mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. But I will re recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the ink horn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. Now, for you guys who don't quite get it, if that doesn't sound like judgment, I don't know what is. But I'm going to tell you, what did God tell him to do first? Mark his people. Mark his chosen ones. Mm -hmm. No harm should be able to come to us. Remember that. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all thine iniquities and heals all thine diseases. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Mm -hmm. So when you see this, you know that there are hidden benefits, hidden mercies, coverings. God is hiding us under the shadow of the Almighty in his secret place. As they say in that song, can't touch this, do, 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 can't touch this. You can't touch God's people. No weapon formed against us 
will prosper. And that should encourage you. No weapon formed against us will prosper. However, God wants to encourage his people. Do not be afraid to fight. Don't be afraid to do battle. Do you remember what happened in the book of Judges? How God had Deborah. I'm not going to read it for the sake of time. God had Deborah and Barak. She reminded him of God's promises. And Barak said, I will not go to war unless you go with me. And she said, all credit will go to a woman. He said, I don't care as long as you go with me. And they won the battle. Now here's the crazy part. There's a part toward the end where this man goes in this woman's house. And when he goes in this woman's house, what does he do? He asks the woman to protect him. I'm just, going, I'm just telling a story. I don't want to go into detail. Because it's, it's what happens that I'm talking about. She invites him in. She has an ulterior motive. And he asks for water. She gives him milk. Mm -hmm. Read Judges chapter 4 and 5. She gives him milk. So what ends up happening? He sits down and he's resting. And she comforts him. She makes him feel at ease. And while he's resting, she takes a nail from the tent and a hammer. And hammers that nail right through the temple of his head. That's what you call the violent taking it by force. Mm -hmm. The kingdom suffers violence. That means the kingdom allows violence. And the violent take it by force. There are some things, saints, saints of God, people of God, that you're going to have to snatch in the supernatural. You're, you're going to have to call on from the north, from the east, from the south, from the west. And you're going to have to call that these blessings be loose to you. That provision be loose to you. You're going to have to do battle against the demonic. You're going to have to do battle in prayer against the sins and the evil of the heads of state, of the nations, of all the mess that's going on oppressing the poor. See, for those of you now who don't know God, one thing, God has a tender spot in his heart for the poor, for the needy, for the stranger, for the orphan, for the widow. And whether you are a church or whether you are the government, you are to look out for those five categories. And what you are doing is the very thing I mentioned God hates. You're closing your fist. And you're allowing these people to fall by the wayside because you are protecting your pocket. You're protecting your hidden accounts overseas. You're taking care of all your assets while you're letting them fall by the wayside. The ones who need a little extra help that you're not willing to give because you're worried about this nickel over here and this dime over here and how that's going to affect your industry. But you don't care about the people, who, the soldiers who have served this country, who are living in poverty. You don't care about them. The state of California isn't helping anybody on Social Security, on SSI, on disability. They're not helping them. They only want to help people who have worked and paid taxes, baby. It's all about the money. Follow the money and you'll find the hidden sins. But God knows. He sees and he knows. So you who are God's people, who are living, people of God, called by his name, called out of dark and delivered from shame, one holy race, saints, everyone, listen, you need to pray hard, fast and pray. As Joel says, weep between the porch and the altar, Joel chapter 2. And cry out that God spare his people. Because there are demons.
demons and warlocks and witches and wolves and all kind of sheeps and wolves clothing eating up and devouring the people that are the most defenseless, that have no voice. They're the ones being ripped off day by day. They're the ones being cheated day by day. And God sees and he knows. And you need to pray that God brings judgment on the perpetrators of those victims, not the victims. They don't need judgment. They've been judged by these rich folk. They need mercy in through here. They need provision. This fireman that I showed you the video of in Hawaii, Honolulu, uh, he, he was a career fireman. So was his father before him. He was crying his eyes out. I played the video for our service before I got into the message. Crying his eyes out because they're taking away his freedom of choice and telling him. And they also, this is the sad part, the unions that fight for their rights have been shut down. The government found a way to silence the union so they don't even have a legal foot to stand on to fight for these people who need to be there. The first responders being forced against, some of them want to take it, but some of them don't. And the ones who don't are being penalized. I mean, it feels like we're somewhere in Germany behind the red curtain. I mean, this feels like the days of Hitler. What is going on? This isn't America anymore, y'all. Okay, I'm not trying to get political. This is all about sin and what God's going to do. God's going to judge this crap. Trust me on that. I knew it when I had that dream. God's going to judge. All right. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 13. I'm not going to be long. The miracle I want you to look at is just verse 21 and 22. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. When things start getting dark in this world, I mean, we really start feeling the sorrows, the pangs, the birth pangs of the coming of Christ. And it gets so dark, it's almost unbearable. Remember, God is a miracle working God. And he will not withhold any good thing from his people. Remember that. But those of you who are out there playing tiddlywinks. See, God's going to judge, I think, about three different classes of people. Number one, he's going to judge the heads of state that are wreaking havoc in all these countries, causing poverty to be more intense, withholding help when the help is readily available because they want to make sure their needs are met, their desires are met before they do anything for the ones that need the help way more than they will ever need. Number two, God is going to judge the church, the leaders in the church and the people in the church who call themselves saints, who call themselves believers, but they're the synagogue of Satan. God knows who they are. He knows the difference. Only certain ones will have that mark of God on our foreheads. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God. Remember that. When you out there playing your little game, slipping and sliding, peeping and hiding, where nobody can see what you're doing, what you've done. Yeah. 
That's number two. And number three, God is going to come hard. I see the word on rebellious. On the rebellious. The rebellious people that are dead set on doing what they're going to do. It's like in your face. The, the, all these people that are living an abominable lifestyle. All of you that play with, with witchcraft. All of you that dabble in things you know the Bible is clearly said. It's an abomination. Clearly said it. Mm -hmm. Idol worship. Crying out to Baal. Crying out to the devil to deliver you. Going to seances. Go playing with the Ouija board to get your answers rather than waiting on God. Because God takes too long for you. So you're going to get your answers. Yeah, you're going to get a whole lot more than an answer. This is kind of hard for me to preach because I've never been led to preach a, a word. And I don't feel to beat on people. But I do say, judgment is coming. I'm going to close with this. Judgment is coming. It has already begun. Through the weather, weather disasters or anomalies, whatever word you want to use. The pestilence is going around with the big C-19 and then you got the, 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 the other one, the, yeah, the Delta, Elta, Belta, whatever you want to call it. More are going to come. And I see hunger. Some of you who have never suffered hunger are going to get real hungry, y'all. You're going to get real hungry. You're going to wonder, are you still in the country of America? What is this? Yeah, you're going to feel like a third world country. Not all of you. Not the ones with the mark of God on your forehead. But those of you who have chosen to refuse that mark. Who have chosen to play with the devil and tinker with his toys. Those of you who have chosen to oppress the poor and the widows and the needy and the orphans. Those of you who have closed up your fist so that you can get richer and richer and fatter and fatter while the poor get poorer. And you play all these little bureaucratic games. Judgment is going to come down on you in ways. Some of this stuff you're, you're doing, some of these games you're playing are going to backfire on your family members. The very ones that you tried to hold help from is going to have a devastating effect on your families. And you're going to be like, oh no, what have I done? Too late. Too late. Here comes the angel of death to claim his. And it will be at your expense. While you're packing your pockets, you'll be losing your loved ones. Some of you will be losing your own lives, your own health. And that money won't do jack for you. And other people that you were in whizzy whizzying with, scheming and conniving with, they'll run off with the goods, leaving you holding the bag, and you'll be there all alone. In the center of God's judgment. God is judging this country. He's judging this world. But he has a tender heart for the victims. Remember that. When you think you're getting over, oh, you're not getting over, baby. Because when God takes care of us, he's also going to take care of you. And you're not going to like him as a caregiver. Because it ain't going to be in love. It's going to be in fury. And then you will learn to fear God like you never feared him before. So if you guys don't line up and get on your knees, it's going to be hell to pay for you. What does 2 Chronicles 7, 14 say? If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. See, some of y'all are called. 
but you haven't answered the call. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Can you imagine what an oasis this whole world would be? If all y'all would humble yourselves and pray, seek his face and turn from your wicked Wicked, wicked ways. Money, 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 money. Money. Money, 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 money. Money. Some people got to have it. Some people really need it. They do things, they do things, they do things with it. I'm going to stop there. Judgment is at the door. Judgment has come. And for some of you, it cannot be reversed. It will play all the way out. And I pray God has mercy on your soul because there ain't going to be no mercy in your life when he gets through with you. And for those of you who are God's people, Get real close up in them now. Let him be your refuge. Let him be your trust. And I'm going to close with Psalms 46. This is for God's people. All you hypocrites, all you ain'ts, all you blab it, grab it, and, and you faking and, and shaking and quaking. No, this ain't for you. This is for God's real people. Oh, my goodness. Psalms 46. So don't you be afraid, God's people. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He's our refuge. Think about that. Therefore will not we fear, don't fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. No matter what's shaking and quaking out there, you're in God's hands. You're safe. Though the waters there are roar and be troubled, no matter how many tsunamis fly overhead, not a drop will get on you. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, the, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. We have a river flowing within. We're full of living waters. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. Mm -hmm. We are helped, y'all. We are helped. Whew. The heathen raged. The kingdoms will move. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaks the bow. He cuts the spear asunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Remember, he said he was going to burn the bones of the oppressor. Be still and know that I am God. You be still. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, his people. The God of Jacob is our refuge. That's what we can take to the bank. What about the rest of you? 